Let's make a car. My name is Oscar Beckler, and I worked on the uh, Game Jam game, Wheelie Big and Small, which is a racing game where the faster you go, the bigger you get, and that can mess up your ability to go through obstacles and stuff. And, you know, we got together that it was mostly the Seattle Blender, or not Seattle Blender, Seattle Godot user group, and uh, we wanted to make a game, and we were thinking about what skill sets we can bring and what we know how to do already. And I love geometry nodes, and I wanted to make a car generator. I've daydreamed about this in the past, and I thought, what a great excuse to sit down and try it out. So this is my car generator. Uh, my first thought about this was, you know, some of the basics of how cars are made, which is you have three kinds of cars. You have a one box, and that is something like a tiny convertible, or maybe a VW bus is a one box. Um, you know, maybe there's like a slope here, but for the most part, uh, it's just a single box. Then you have two boxes. This is what you see for things like uh, Jeeps and hatchbacks and SUVs, where it's kind of this starting box and then one, but it goes all the way to the back. And lastly, you have three boxes, and that's like your sedans. And so that's usually like two on the bottom and then one box on top. And so in designing this, I wanted, you know, I have certain philosophies about how you should be doing geometry nodes projects. I think geometry nodes is a tool building tool where you build something and then you hand it off to somebody else. And the question is always, what is in the GUI for these other people that might be using your file? And I think one example of this is, you know, we generally want uh, the ability to go into edit mode. Edit mode is the friendliest, uh, easiest place to do things in Blender. And so I want to make sure that that's like a starting interface that people go in and they think I can use that. Another example of this is in edit mode, you can modify the crease on anything and it affects this. So uh, the other thing I thought about is what goes in the panel over here and how would I go about making a car? So you can see there's whole bunch of various interface stuff at this point. It's not totally organized. So from there, we go to geometry nodes. And let's walk through this tri uh, tree of how I go about making this. Uh, the first thing I do is I get this bottom of the car. And this is useful for a couple things. Number one, I end up at some point extruding it downward and moving it upward as a domain size box. And that lets you sort of trim the bottom of the car off. But also this is something where I end up um, sticking my car axles on here. So I start with this initial axle creation, which is just instancing two curves on two curves. And the reason for this is I mash this into a bounding box of that initial wheel uh, so it initially looks like this, where is it? And by having these four of them, I can pop this one and this one, and that ends up being something where I have a lot of freedom to do this, but I know it's always going to be contained in this zero to 100% region. I construct this wheel profile. This is like <coughs> very specifically like the top of the tire, the side of the tire, the indent for the hub, and then this little uh, downward angle. And I use this to lathe out the wheel. And by doing that, the reason for that is because I can use this um, curve to mesh with UVs group that I rely on so heavily. And that'll make it so that curve A is the UVs in one direction and curve B is the UVs in another direction. I store this in an attribute called curve UV, which I think is access somewhere here in the, uh, it's accessed here in the car generator material. And when I do that, let's see here. Uh, I end up remaking this, uh, hub so that I can do that separately because I want to um, join geometry but uh, collapse verts but not everything. What am I doing up here? 
Uh, this is where I get the four points of this, which is based on um, where those axles are and a deleted geometry, and then I think I raycast it so that it's always going to be on the side of the car. And then I mirror it. And so uh, I can know that it's like always coming from the side and pointing inward. Another thing that's kind of fun, this is probably more work than it was worth. But uh, another thing I did at some point is I construct this overall wheel placement by um, making that uh, initial axle into a cylinder using the same radius value as the wheel solely so that I can uh, do a Boolean operation to get what is nearby and then so this does a Boolean operation between this and the car body, which I end up using to then delete anything that is proximal to those inside faces. And that lets me choose between scaling the elements of the flatness. So I can have a car with wheels that are kind of pointed cartoonishly, or I can uh, scale them separate. I should show you right here. So there's my wheels. I'm gonna take this wheel flatness down to zero and it's very very flat but if I have it at one and for instance if I grab this you can see how it kind of lets the wheels tilt a little bit or just completely break <laughs> So all of that is to find out the exact points with the exact normals, and then I instantiate the wheels on them. Let's see, what else am I doing over here? Body subdivision. So this takes the initial body of this, and uh, it's just combining the crease edge and the crease verge plus a crease increase over here. So I have like three levels of controlling the crease. You can do it in edit mode, you can do it with vertex creasing, or you can do it with um, the overall body crease, which is somewhere in here. I think it's under the main car hole, crease increase. I then extrude out these windows, and by storing named attributes on them, I can change what chunk of their UVs are in the material. So you can see I'm once again. Uh, unwrapping everything uh, and just moving it up. This is kind of a doozy. Uh, so my theory on the car face is, <coughs> you know, theoretically, you want to be making this random car. And sometimes the face is going to be uh, more up, more down. And what I want to do is basically get these faces. And if I have the initial curves that I'm going to generate this other stuff off, I can just make sure those curves are attached here and it'll work. So let's see, how do I do this? I start by getting the front faces. This is actually the back of the car. This is the front of the car. So I use vertex groups to separate that out. I create a bounding box around it. These are basically the individual curve chunks, like a single point for the light, a single curve for what's going to end up becoming the bumper, a grid that has divisions for where the face of the car is going to be. And then I join them all into this starting point. I mean, uh, you can't see the verts, but they're here, these little guys. And so once I get all those, I set their position to, I do a bounding box to form so that they're inside of the same general area as those car faces for the front of the car. 
And I set position to uh, geometry proximity of whatever the closest chunk of the actual car face is. So once I have these, I can use those curves to generate all these things. So here's the bumper, nothing fancy. The turn signals, also nothing fancy. I think uh, I, I think I threw like just random rotation on there, and random scale. Uh, I, I kind of like it as part of the cartooniness of the car. And here's the headlights, which I think currently go the wrong direction. Whatever, it's good enough to ship, right? And so by having those initial curves there, when I start generating geom like it would suck to figure out how to project this geometry first and have it start off right. But by projecting the curves first, then the data is just there and I can manipulate it after the fact once I know it's in the right spot. So let's wrap here. This is where I just make the headlights, I think. Just using vertex groups to extrude things out. And yeah, the final result is a, uh, oh yeah, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. The axles. So way down here, when I made the wheels. Yeah, so I make a curve very similar to the initial one using the same parameters. And I delete it and make it so it's only these faces, which means that when I extrude them down, this is like my initial uh, setting to get some sort of cage that will determine my deletion when I do a Boolean operation. And then I scale it so that it is definitely going to be within the bounds. And then finally, when I do a mesh Boolean, that cuts out the wheel well. main chunks of this, right? So you end up with this combination of two interfaces that you can use. One is, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, I have a floating vert. So now I can do certain things like uh, I can, uh, for instance, I think if I have an edge in between here, this is like more geometry than I would like, but I can go in and remove these from here and then I can have two separate windows. Most of this stuff is pretty dang flexible. Of course, if you take it too far, it breaks. But I love this. It's just so fun to get these cartoony cars out the door. And like I said, you can go in and use Shift E to scale it, and to make it sharper or stronger. And then a lot of this stuff ends up being in here. So the tail, this is where I do things like for the initial tail position. If you're not sure, set it back to zero. the face this one has a bunch of stuff for most of these are like after the fact translations and I kind of don't love this I think in the future I might have a separate face out here and the whole point of this face would be um, a different plane where I set this stuff or maybe I have a single edge for the bumper and then you know it can be a little more uh, grabbing stuff but I kind of like this idea that a single mesh with individual vertex groups kind of instantly generates the stuff that you need.
the chassis, a bunch of, we can make the wheelhouse bigger or smaller. We can spread the axle more or less. And then also, we can make it more forward or backward. Just very, you know, quirky cars. That's what we're going for here. Main car hole. This is a final offset, so you can have a low rider. You can also set the subdivision levels. And a final crease. A crease. Here's that trim bottom. So I think that makes a lot of nice results where you end up with a wheel well that ends up losing a lot of its circularness because it's so trimmed and floating on top of the trolley. And then the wheels, obviously I keep them making them. Oh, these are messing with my EVs. I didn't know that. That's good to know. So you have this initial wheel radius. So theoretically, you know, I'm curious, like, can I make this into a monster truck? Can I make this into, you know, what kind of cars can I make with this? And, you know, so far the results are really, really kind of fun. Uh, be like something like this. I think I need some sort of final control on my UV settings. Anyways, this is the car generator. I hope you go play with it. And I hope you play wheelie big and small.